Sounds like freedom out there. Sounds like it's the 4th of July and would be the worst time to record a video. Maybe I... I think I'll just do it anyway. What's going on, guys? I hope you're having a great day. Uh, today I've got something really special planned. Um, it's a project that I've been wanting to do for a while. It's a project that's the deadline's coming up really soon, so I kind of need to do now. Um, but uh, I'm going to tell you all about it. The first thing I need to do is I need to get some new supplies. Um, I keep I keep most of my supplies underneath my desk, so give me a minute. I'll just I'll be right back. <coughs> ah! Oh, what was that? All right, it's fine. I just uh. Whoa. It smells like desk in here. Alright. Oh my god. You guys are still here. There's a Dairy Queen under there. I prefer a Brahms, but like, eh, I like the blizzards. They're pretty good. I got a shower. There's a swimming pool. Man. I don't remember putting any of that stuff in there. I remember the pool. Hmm. The art supplies. <laughs> Okay. All right. What a magical place. Anyway, so uh, I want to tell you guys about a new project I'm going to be working on, uh, and I'll explain to you. It's the one thing about having a beard is that sometimes one of your hairs is just like, and it just jumps into your mouth. So I'm going to be working on a sketchbook for the Brooklyn Museum of Art. My girlfriend actually got me, eh, you can kind of see it there, it's a little uh, washed out. Um, my girlfriend got me this for my birthday and uh, because I am really, really good at uh, procrastinating, I, uh, <laughs> I had all these other projects to do. I didn't really, I wasn't able to, to devote the time that I needed to it. Um, but I was logging all of my ideas for it. Um, so I'm going to open it up right now. I'm going to show you guys more or less what it's going to be. All right, so you open it. And I've already opened this thing like, you know, a thousand times just to, just to look at it because it's really cool. She knows me very well. My girlfriend's the best. Um, and if you don't believe me, um, she got me the sketchbook. If, and if you're still like, but how do you know she's cool? She also bought me this shirt. <clears throat> and if you're like, well, okay, but how do you know that she's, like, the best? Um, you're asking a lot of questions. It's none of your business. So can I can I get... I've got some stuff to do. Can I move on with the video, please? Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, all right. So uh, this is just kind of like a... Um, uh, like a brochure kind of thing for the uh, the project, like what to expect and uh, when everything is due by, um, more or less. Just um, register your book so that whenever you send it in, they know what to do with it, all that stuff. Um, this right here is the sketchbook itself. It's a little uh, smaller than I'm used to working, but lately I've been trying to work with a smaller scale stuff to kind of get ready for it. Um, if you've noticed, most of my sketchbooks uh, or my drawings lately have been about uh, eight by five. That's to get ready for this. I think this is a five by seven or something like that. I don't want to spoil anything for you guys because I kind of want these to be um, a bit of a surprise. I'll show you like one just to show you what what it is that I've been, uh, been working on. I'll show you the first one. So basically, uh, the idea is like, uh, this is the page I'll be working on, and I've been taking uh, post-its to kind of uh, work out some ideas, and I'll put it on the opposite page, just so I have that as a reference for 
my frame of thought when I'm working on this. So uh, when I, whenever I was uh, in my painting classes, I had started to do this thing where I would take um, a song that I was obsessed with or, or a, a musician or something would put out uh, an entire album that I absolutely loved. And that would happen, you know, a lot. Um, and what I would do is I would, I, I would either put that song or that entire album on repeat and then just have it write a narrative for me in my head and I would do a painting based on that. And some of my favorite paintings came from whenever I would put a song on repeat for like, you know, six, seven hours and then just start drawing and start start painting and uh, just kind of get carried away in the, the cadences and the the lyrics and, and the music and, and the emotion, the passion that I would feel in those songs would kind of um, perpetually inspire uh, my my creativity. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be selecting like 16 different songs because there's 16 pages in this book. I'm going to select uh, 16 different songs, put them on repeat, and then just kind of paint them or, or, or draw them. Uh, this, this paper, I don't think it takes paint real well, so I'll probably be doing um, color pencil, which is uh, what I got. This is Prismacolor. This is a really old, dusty Prismacolor uh, pencils. Um, I'm going to be seeing what I can do with this. I'm not real used to color pencils yet, but um, I have an idea of how to use them. Um, and I'm going to be doing my best. So this is going to be more of a um, artistic, cathartic um, venture for me. So I hope you guys will join me. I hope you guys enjoy it. And uh, you're going to get to know me pretty well. Um, the kind of music I like and the uh, kind of experiences that have formed my uh, opinions about the kind of music I like. I just remembered I switched the wrong ones here. It's starting to bug me. Uh, avert your eyes. My wrists are naked. I'll probably just get demonetized. That's fine. Art supplies aren't expensive. Um, Alright, so um, I hope you guys uh, are going to enjoy it. I, uh, I'm really excited about this project. Uh, thank you to Amanda for, for getting me this sketchbook. You know me so well. This is going to be great. And if you don't like these videos, well, you you can just deal with it. Bro. Alright, that's it. That's enough for me. Alright guys, so this first one is going to be titled Lockless. This is based off of a song by the same title written by Greg Dooley, who is one of my all-time favorite musical artists. Uh, his lyrics, his music, his... Uh, overall style of, of uh, artistry is, is fantastic. Um, if you've never heard of him, uh, I would re recommend looking him up. So the first five drawings I do in this um, sketchbook are going to be based off of songs written by Greg Dooley. Um, whether it's his band Afghan Wigs, or the Twilight Singers, or his solo stuff, his music has always been very inspiring to me. He, he has a way of painting a picture with words that is um, incredible. Kind of a disclaimer, I guess, for, for all of these songs that, uh, that I'm going to be going through. Um, well, I, maybe most of them. Most of them are very uh, sad songs. I love sad songs. I love listening to sad music. And I would say the, the reason I love listening to sad music is not so much that I like feeling sad. Um, so much as I'm not I'm not a sad person. Uh, if you know me, you know that I'm I'm usually bubbly. I, I can uh, I'm I'm optimistic. I am always looking at the bright side of things uh, because I I think perspective is uh, very important to keep in life. Um, just because my day is not going great doesn't mean that I should be in a bad mood about it. I am I'm still alive. My family's still healthy. I have a lot of things to be grateful for and I try to keep all of these things in perspective as frequently as I can and it usually balances out my day pretty well but there's something about listening to really sad songs sad songs about regret and about alienation and general heartbreak that comfort me um, 
I saw this uh, I saw this post this this study had been done that uh, listening to sad music while you're sad can actually make you happy and it's not like schadenfreude or whatever that is uh, where you're you're happy that someone else is sad it's it's more about uh, listening to someone empathize with your pain or your um, feelings of, uh, of of loss or, or whatever it might be and it, it just kind of it almost feels like venting whenever you get to connect with another human being who's uh, more eloquently put into words what you feel um, and and that's kind of the main theme of, of all of these sketches is that there are certain songs that I've heard there, there's there's music that I've heard uh, lyrics that I've heard that I find myself incapable of moving past that song for an extended period of time. Um, there was this one time where I listened to a song for four months, something like that, from like mm, early to mid-November to late February, um, just because I loved that song. Um, there's like a whole other kind of story behind that too, but like I, to this day, I'm not tired of that song. Like I, I can still listen to it. Uh, forever. Uh, what I did was I, I put the CD in my car back when my cars still had CD players, I guess. And uh, I just put that track on repeat and I listened to it over and over again. So for like four months, anytime I drove anywhere, I listened to that song. Um, my iPod uh, play count for that particular song was over a thousand. Um, but this was like 10 years ago. So I'm sure it's, you know, 5,000 by now. Yeah, I, I find myself really enjoying listening to, to songs over and over again because there's something that I feel when I when I listen to it that's very tranquil. I feel comfort whenever I listen to um, these songs about um, despair and <laughs> uh, tragedy. Uh, tragedy is probably the, the better word for it. This song in particular, Lockless, uh, can kind of be summed up in in the uh, the idea of falling in love with someone or something um, that ultimately changes and you kind of realize that that person or that thing is, is kind of toxic for you now. So I went with this imagery and there is the, a line in, in the uh, song, it's a, and it's a, it's a popular line in a lot of songs you'll hear the idea or the comparison of moth to flame. So I decided to go with something that felt tragic and beautiful at the same time because that's really what I get from Greg Dooley's music is there's so much heartbreak in there, there's so much um, experience and pain, and, uh, and, and yet this sort of beautiful tranquility in that. I feel there's a sort of wisdom in, in being able to recount the mistakes that you made in a way that is maybe not beating yourself up for it, but understanding and growing from it. Um, there is something that I guess I learned um, from uh, making mistakes and from from heartbreak or, or, or whatever, not necessarily romantic, but just in general, um, is that at some point you, you kind of have to stop beating yourself up uh, over a mistake. Um, at some point it just becomes torture and you've learned all you can from uh, an experience and sometimes it, you just need to move on. So move on. <laughs> Anyway, that's, uh, that's going to do it for me, guys. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, please like, uh, subscribe, make sure you're still subscribed, um, hit the bell for notifications, and um, that's kind of a, a crass way to, to end this video. I apologize for that, but uh, um, I'm going to be doing 15 more of these, so I hope you guys stick around. Um, I really enjoyed the way this came out. I was actually very impressed with the... Uh, the way these uh, color pencils work. I'll talk more about that probably in the next video. Um, but I hope you guys have a great day. Um, I'll see you guys in the next video. Until that day, good luck and Godspeed.